the truth really is that some of us are actually not qualified to be close to other people because we don't know how to be. And if we don't learn, then we really don't have any business being in a relationship with another person. The family is, is the first place that a human being learns how to relate with other people. And if a person doesn't learn the right way to relate with other people while in a family, this contributes to the person that that person becomes as an adult in the future. And then from there, everything else spins. But we really cannot change overnight if we have made a habit of being a certain type of way for 15, 20, 25 years. And so that's why it's important to now go back to how people become who they are. It's a good exercise for us to look at the people that we are raising as parents. Through those lenses, we can see even our own errors and omissions and things that we need to improve on. The others are waiting and we're going to get into this conversation. Thank you for being with us. First thing you want to do is to regain your power. And it takes two to handle. Oh my God, you need to see what she's going through. The husband broke her neck. What I basically want us to target is people, they actually expect you to, to be patient with somebody. But the truth is that some of us are really not qualified in the first place to even be in a relationship because of the way that we were raised, the way that the things that we went through in life. Not saying that they would never or that we would never be qualified, but some corrections need to be made, some things need to be adjusted, and then we will be ready. And that's why sometimes it's like, it's never going to end. There's no amount of patience that's going to change this thing if the person has not changed from inside. If we, if I have not changed from inside, there's no amount of patience that you're going to give me or talking to that's going to make me change until I realize what is wrong in my thinking and make that adjustment. And that's why it's important for us to raise our children with that in, in mind. Quickly, I want to jump in into one thing, and it's a rule that will guide anyone. Um, the rule is not because any one of us is perfect. The rule is because that is what needs to be done for you to get any positive output. The, the title of, the, of our topic is, who are you raising? Would you truly be happy with your child as a spouse? So first and foremost, as a rule, without prejudices, without biases, one rule is to endeavor to strive to raise your child or your children as human beings. A lot of a lot of people, for one reason or the other, for economic factors, for physical location factors, for environmental factors, and for several other factors, have lost the essentials of being a human being. And when you say, "Oh," How do I be? How, how, how should I be a human being? How do I raise my child to be a human being? First and foremost, raise your child to respect others, to respect themselves and respect others. Now, from that, several things are put in place and several things do not even come to the fore, not to talk of being corrected. The problem is that a lot of parents have lost because they are they have one agenda, they have one bias, they have one position, whether whether I mean let, um, factored into them by society, by culture, by relationships, but the real essence of being a human being, which is respect for yourself and respect for others, it is the foundation of any human being. Anyone who lacks, lacks respect for themselves and respect for others would find it difficult to be able to raise another person because it's, that, it's the premise for you to do anything, to, for you to build upon. It's the foundation. Respect for yourself. When you respect yourself, there are certain things you will not do. There are certain things you will not say. There are certain places you will not find yourself. And if you are able to impart all of that strenuously, and I'm not saying in any way that it is easy, but if that is your focal point 
for you to raise children that respect themselves and respect others. Little things as small as, I want to give you a personal example when I came to um, Canada. By the time I came, my boy was, I won't say fat, but he was big. So when I came, and I'm, I want to use it as an example so, so that we know that we all learn and we must learn. We must caution ourselves. I used to say, ah, come on. You are, you are big. You are too big. You are, you, are, you know, you are, why you, what? Oh, you eat too much. You, you need to reduce. But what I saw was that one day he was, he was somebody. One of the things I raised them with, do, do not, do not, uh, body shame anyone i raise them like that so but me and i'm an adult i'm telling him he's too big he's too fat more like so to say he's too fat so one day he was body shaming somebody so i corrected him do you understand i said no do not body shame anyone okay so but the correction was not for him alone the correction was for me Two, who was correcting him so instead of going forward instead of telling him oh uh you are too no no what i did though i just concentrated on the things that will make him lose those fat that i felt were too much for his age do you understand me because i didn't want him to start uh you know generating health issues and all of that so but instead of continually i just kept quiet on I, all I concentrated on was making sure that he did things, you know, he did things, activities that made sure that he wasn't gaining weight excessively. But what I'm trying to say is that it's an example of how we, if you have the right foundation, you will self-correct. And in self-correcting, you will correct every other person that you're raising. But the fundamental is respect for yourself and respect for others. You reminded me of something that I, I'm, I'm happy that you, you brought up because this is something that if we all think about it, a lot of us may see this in ourselves and some of us may not recognize it. Here is the thing, if you respect yourself, that's one thing too. Sometimes we find ourselves in a, in a relationship with somebody, whether it's romantic friends or even our family, you will find that if you respect yourself, if you have respect for yourself, you will hardly be in a relationship where you are being disrespected. Yeah. And this is because you will, once it starts, if it disrespects that, you will say to yourself, this isn't right. So when we are pushing people to be patient and to be more understanding and to give a chance, we have to keep this in mind. You don't say that to a person who is self-respecting and expect them to put themselves in a place where if I'm respecting myself, why won't somebody else respect me? And so that's something that we need to keep in mind, especially for our culture and our society. When somebody is taking a stance, it's not necessarily being hard or being tough. It's because you recognize that you deserve this level of respect and you're asking for it. But when you don't have that respect for yourself, that's when you are open to disrespect and taking it because you already don't respect yourself. So the reason I'm pointing this out is for us to understand sometimes that we are the cause of what is happening to us. So the moment that we start to work on ourselves, those things that we feel make us less than deserving of respect, we will begin to, I'm not even saying this because I want to accuse us. I'm just trying to help us to understand. We will begin to, to make ourselves of a higher quality. Once I'm of a higher quality, then I will know that I actually deserve this respect. And then I cannot take anything that's less than that. And that's what we need to transfer to our children because they will see us and they will, they will learn from that. Because you cannot give what you don't have. You cannot ask a person to also demand what they don't even have to give themselves. Coco, do you want to go? Maybe you're muted. You're muted. Yeah, I think you're right. And I do believe that um, Aki is right. Um, 
slightly deviating a bit from you know uh, okay i think i agree with you but let me just clarify because i've been doing a lot of studies lately regarding a certain condition hmm. the thing about respecting yourself um, i know that condition we're going to have to have that topic one of these days very soon <laughs> Yes, yes. The thing about re the, the thing is, what you don't have, you can't give, right? And um, I'm assuming that most of our audience are well Africans. I'm assuming. I'm sure some white people might be. So, um, what I'm about to say is more directed. Not that it doesn't apply to white people, but more directed towards black people, especially Africans. You see. Our culture. I was having this conversation with someone the other day on another topic altogether, but what I found was the culture weighing in. Um, it was about somebody, and we were, I don't know, we were asking each other about, you know, how you talk about old friends, where's he now, where's she now? And I think the person said something like, um, marriage breaking up or something and said oh um you know white people made a reference to i think he was married to a white person or whatever as in whoever it was as and said um oh you know how white people do their things but in our culture insinuating that the marriage broke up because of their culture that's this white culture and not the black but i corrected him i said listen whatever it is that is in their culture it's fair okay so african men and i'm not saying all of them i said for the african men that are manipulators narcissists um controlling blah 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 they would always they will actually smear that's the right word they will actually smear these white marriages as in hey don't even go there whereas in the reality of it is because the way they're raised they're raised to respect both men and women and for you to say no enough relating it to what we're talking about here what sort of son are you raising what sort of daughter are you raising because it's not just men the only reason why we always tend to talk about men is that it's been proven without a shadow of doubt they're more narcissistic men they're more disrespectful men than there are women they're more controlling men than there are women but not In to say right oh yes of course but not to say there's not more than a handful remember i didn't say handful more than a handful of women that have those tendencies or that are worse than the so-called majority of these men. So um, for the purpose of clarity, this is meant for both sexes. This is not to defend the, the women that are horrible. We need to be careful the way we raise our kids, just like Ake was talking about, right? It could have been something more serious. Not like that one isn't. It could have been more some, something like a behavior, if that makes sense. If he didn't call out his son, if he didn't correct him, his son would have gone on to say something else that would top that and top that and top that till he gets to that age of either being narcissist, like feeling um, insecure about himself and taking his low self-esteem to dump on someone else. It may not necessarily be about body shaming, something else altogether. This because is beautiful. It would, this is beautiful. Yes. Because it would make him feel good. After all, he's a, a fat kid, right? He has the low self-esteem, you know, thing going on in his head. But this is that not necessarily knowing the effects of what he was telling him and i'm glad he said i learned the minute i was correcting my son like you don't dare do that it felt like oh my god i'm actually talking to myself so i'm sure from that point onwards you see the way we raise our kids moving away from him because i don't want to use his son as the topic here matters if i raise my child in 
do you know that when you raise a child so high handedly like we do back home or even here with most African parents, do you know that it actually results in the child having such low self-esteem? I'll give you an example. You know, back home is normally accepted and we believe that we're making gingering the child to walk harder like you're there taking the last position i know um yoruba people call it olodo olodo is actually now a, a universal word for we call it itiboribo you're a dunce you don't know anything you stay there this that 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 look at you you cannot even think little things like you can't clean your room you can't do this what is it that you're good at look at your sister i went out the other day i went to mr whatever whatever's house even his children young now it's okay i'm not saying that as parents even white parents would say that to their kids at some point but if it's repetitive and if you lose yourself because of your own upbringing to dump that on your child as soon as you say it quickly realize yourself even if not at that moment because you're still upset when you go away 30 minutes an hour later going to bed waking up if you remember don't go the normal african thing of being egocentric as in how can i apologize to my child because that's another problem you know that what you've done is wrong right but you would say sorry to, to the child in every other way without addressing that main issue let me tell you what that does when you say sorry to the child but in every other way i.e now being nice from now on buying things oh how are you hey hi it's good today oh uh, hey uh, go and take that whatever you've only just pushed that previous day's insult deeper into the child's head do you understand what i'm saying deeper into that child's head you haven't resolved it giving him those little things here and that you haven't resolved it you haven't said to him i was way out of line yesterday i shouldn't have said this i'm really sorry for why is it me. important that we do that i'll tell you why it's so important number one we're teaching children we're oh, teaching God. them to take accountability we're teaching them not to shift blame i'm a parent i can't start telling you like forever from right from when my children were probably about two above two years also, I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm one of the few African parents, because I'm sure there are just a few out there. I apologize to my kids. Sometimes I don't get it right. Sometimes I'll go to bed and I'll wake up. Okay, maybe it was late in the night or in the evening. I wouldn't even let my pride hold me back. I'll go to them the next day. And if I bring any of them on this program now and I ask them, I wouldn't say anything. And I say, tell them why mommy says she apologizes. And they'll say, because mom says, she's raising us to take responsibility to, to, to you know to be accountable for our actions that's the number one yeah that's great to treat people with respect if you get it wrong there's everyone gets it wrong but you must own up now with african parents we don't and when you don't you're there thinking sorry I, I, i'll just take a few more minutes you're there thinking eh, but i said sorry in every other way and eh, my parents never said sorry to me look what you ended up being for them not saying sorry to you you ended up being exactly what they were to you so you know that the things they did to you you didn't like it were you now feeling empowered because the thing is it makes you feel some sense of power my parents did it to me i could do it to my child take it no you have to break the circle because if you don't break that circle you might be raising a narcissist if you keep on and on and on the child will learn how to block themselves because they need to shield themselves from the abuse and it something in their brain just clicks off right. and once it clicks oh, off it is irreparable i've done i've done i've been actually doing a study on i've watched over 200 videos i've watched uh, read over 200 articles or in ss and i am so determined i would have a well, platform someday to talk about narcissism in the African society, because I found that we have far more we're many narcissists. It. We're creating it, right? We, we are, it, and it's this pattern, but if you call your, like I said to my children, you know, I've used my children as an example. 
they would go on in their marriages, relationships, or you know, when they get, or even with people, what colleagues and all that, when they get it wrong, they wouldn't feel any shame because I've removed the shame from apologizing. Most people don't apologize, not because they don't want to, but it's the shame that is associated with apologizing. Owning that you did something wrong. Yes, and especially a parent to a child. And you see these people growing up to struggle to apologize to their spouses who might be the same age mates with them, their work colleagues. I'm not talking about younger people now, people that are even the same age mates. Now, if they find it really difficult to apologize to people that are the same age, you know, level or age mates with them, imagine okay. them ever being able to apologize to a child. That's an insult also, to my also, culture. Also, yeah, yeah. Also the partner so, that is supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. So the, the final sort of thing I have to say, I now still talk later, but the final so that um, um, Tony can talk. When we're raising, because the topic is about raising, are we raising children that are worthy as in to be married and all that, as yeah. in how they're fair? If you prepare your children and they know, listen, I got it wrong. I have to take responsibility for it. No other person. So you are actually apologizing in the I and not a but. If you hadn't done this, I wouldn't have. That's not an apology. Any of I, I listened to um, what a professor a few days ago. He said, any apology that has a but is not a genuine apology. It's not an apology. <laughs> There, there mustn't be a mo so if we get it right with our children i think we own we we we're the ones that create the narcissist parents do that's that i mean it's been theoretically proven it's been beyond every shadow of doubt parents raise the narcissist either deliberately or indeliberately i i really love the fact that you took it this way See, the things that you mentioned and the things that Aki mentioned, they look like very little minute and trivial things. But you see how deep, how deep these things affect us and, and affect who we become. So it's wonderful that we can see that we are the ones who are creating what we're having, right? And so that every one of us can know now that we can make these little changes so that the next person tomorrow will have a better person in front of them and if we're raising our children and we're thinking oh well it doesn't matter because my child can be anyhow let the person who gets them deal with it the truth really is that when i send my my child out there in the world and they are not a quality person the person who is dealing with them is unhappy yes but my child isn't going to be able to form good relationships and because we're human beings and we're social beings, we want mm -hmm. our relationships to thrive. And once I'm a person whose relationships are not thriving, what does that make me? It makes me an unhappy person. So I am now inadvertently creating a child, setting my child up for an unhappy future. That's correct. So whatever you think, yeah, whatever we think that we're doing that doesn't really matter, it comes back. Now, how would I feel as a parent seeing that my child is struggling? You know? oh, most times they don't feel a thing. M most times they don't. And when that is where the control, in? oh no, they don't. And that's where the control comes in. Because remember, okay. you know that you've raised a child to be permanently under you. I do, okay. I know of mother in laws or father in laws that actually brag about it that their child dare not okay move away right. from that, the that, that, that's witchcraft. That's what I call witchcraft because it's no, like, it's not witchcraft in, in their heads. Yeah. So, because that child has a you, you you haven't made that child independent do you under, it's 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 crazy mm. but i know tony has something to say yeah once words are out it's hard to take it back but if we can always find a way to remedy words that we know we can't take back um for instance i'm going to be very raw here because we are in a place where it's used randomly um fuck is something that is used now worldwide. It's everybody's language, whether as a noun, adjective, pronoun, whatever the thing is. It's just something that is just widely used. Now, coming from my culture or where I was raised, and in a Christian family like that, you, there are things that you can't just say anyhow. 
And so coming into a place where this word is used randomly, like it's nothing. It was more like a hard thing, you know, to assimilate. But I am in a construction world where this is so, <laughs> so it's well, used fine. in every way. And I have fought and battled these things. And so with my kids around, I know what it's like, you know, teaching them how to talk, how not to talk, things to say, things not to say, and so on and so forth. And so one day, of course, I am one of those parents that, uh, that come from a broken relationship, marriage. So we have kids back and forth, right? So one of those days, you know, my kid just, my daughter, because, um, you know, said something. <sighs> I didn't know when it came out. I never said, I never say such. I was just like, fuck. I, and immediately I said it. <laughs> You're like, huh? Oh. I, I want to crumple down. I want to rewind time. I want to, it, it was too late. It was just too late. I am standing and I'm looking at my daughter in the eye and she was looking at me like, did I just, she didn't say nothing, but that's the look. Did I just hear you say that? I am looking at my daughter like, did I just, Say that? And I never use this, but out of frustration, out of anger, out of whatever the thing is, I just. Uh, what Tony said and uh, what uh, what Coco said, uh, and one thing it brings me to is that a lot, and this is a lesson for a lot of parents. Um, a lot of parents talk. We we say do this, don't do this, don't be like this. Do as I say. Go, don't do yes, as I say. yes. And what you find out is that if you cannot beat your chest in different aspect of life, and say, I am an example for my children to follow. It's a strong word, and it's a strong. Uh, statement to make that I'm an example. If you are not continually an example for your children to follow, then you will raise children like uh, Coco had described. You understand? If you if you cannot if you cannot be an example in apologizing when you're wrong, it's not. I'm not even talking about apologizing to your to your children. I'm saying apologizing to even your partner your wife or your husband. Because the, whether you like it or not, the children see you. They see you for upward, at least let's say from the moment they become very extremely cognitive for almost uh, 18 years before they leave your house. If they leave your house at the right age, as in maybe immediately after university, they see, they see from age seven or age six. Yes to age 22, 23, 24. So they, they, they are, those years, they see the pattern and there's, there are no better cop, photocopiers than children. They copy what they see. That's true. Ex, almost exactly. Be, before long, if you're if you not careful, you can, you can start saying things like, oh, you're talking like your mother. You're talking like your father. It, it, it sounds funny, but it is extremely derogatory if it is in the negative. Do you understand? And yeah. a lot of people, a lot of us do not want to. Sometimes I, I, I keep telling people, I say, look, sometimes you don't do what you do for yourself. You do it because you are a mirror. Even, even sometimes things are not, they, they don't really sit well with you. But when you, when you, when you, when you think about the, 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 the other, uh, maybe um, disposition that you could put forward. The ripple effect of what you're yes, doing. Yes, and the ripple effect of it, you just, you just calm down and say, I'd rather do what sets an example, a correct example, 
than do what? Then maybe in the closet, you can address the issue at, as it really is. Because so, most times, most times, it's not that easy to be a positive example in some situations. But you can be, you can still be that possible positive example. And then if you feel that there are issues, it doesn't have to be with your spouse. It can be with even outsiders. You understand me? A natural reaction to a situation might not set good examples for your children who are watching. Right. But um. you wait. <laughs> You, you know, you said you 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 hold it because you know that if they take that example that you are setting, hook, line, and sinker, as of the time that you are setting it, they will go on the wrong path. You're older. Yes, and they might do it at the time that they are young. Yes, you are older. So you know, you can understand the magnitude and the and the extent of whatever you, of whatever is happening. But they don't. Because yes. one majority of them, their frontal lobes are not really totally yes, developed. So they take issues basically most times on the surface of it. Okay, this happened and this was your reaction. This happened and this is what you did. This happened and this is what you said. Not knowing, you know, not understanding the 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 depth. So they're not fully equipped to handle yes, the matter. Yes. Yeah. You know, so sometimes you just almost more like uh deliberately for the sake of their growth for the sake of their character so quote and unquote playing to the gallery for positivity while thereby behind settling the negativity in an adult way i'm not talking about the the even your spouse i'm talking about well, with your spouse every day you are a living example of what they should be if you are not conscious of that as a as a parent then you have lost it. What happened, I never finished my story. It's just that when I think about it, I know why I felt the impact. The, the, the fact that just similar to what Akin was saying, you are teaching your child something and here you are just doing it. That one moment is just stuck out because all I'm trying to say is there are words that we speak out. Once it comes out of the mouth, it's hard to take it back. Oh, right. But once you say it, it's like a big damage. Now, all you're trying to do is to remedy the situation, you know, but that the big question is in remedying the situation, did that care what impact that has on that kid? That is the big question because, yeah, in two ways it might, because one, the child sees that my dad is not as big or is capable of making mistakes. That's one. At the same time, you know what? We are daddies. They are able to come back and realize their mistake and make up. I say, look at me, baby. And she looks at me. You know, daddy doesn't say such things. I teach you not to say it. And I explained why the thing came out. She hugged me and held me. That was a good healing. It's just that when I remember that, when, I, when my mind goes that, I know what it does to me. And yeah. the fact that... The way she looked at me, that look still stays in my head. But um, going forward, um, um, this topic that we're talking about, you know, we're talking about how this affects, uh, I mean, how if we can actually marry somebody that we raise. Remember, when we're talking about who we raise, we're talking from the point of the married people that are raising a kid, the unmarried people that are raising kids, uh, uh, parents that are separated, that are raising kids, uh, mature people, single people that got pregnant by some way or form, but they had to raise kids, and younger people that got pregnant in some way and are raising kids, and then kids that are being, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, other people that are raising other people's kids and they become their daddy. Now, these are all different classifications of um, people that are raising people. Now, the, the big question is, that child before you, that kid before you, whether it's yours or not, whether you are angry because you are separated or not, mm -hmm. the big question is, 
what good really do you have for that kid that you say you love or under your responsibility? What's actually good do you have as to disseminate what information that can either make that child's future better or bad? Now, if you, by whatever means, disseminate whatever information and that kid grows up, if you see a semblance of that kid, would you be able to tolerate the impact of what that kid's gonna do? Are you, are you gonna be able to cope with it? This is the essence, this is what we're talking about. So what seed you plant today, you're gonna enjoy 10, 20 years down the road. And I dare say that others are going to enjoy also. Yeah, that's right, that's right. You are creating a child, yes. That's and, correct. And, and at the end of that as well, even that child is going to either be living a, a life of pain or a life of joy based on what you have prepared them for, for the future. Because once they're making somebody else, other people unhappy, they can never have peace. It's that kind of thing where they say, the one, the child who won't allow the parents to sleep cannot sleep. So what you don't give to other people, you can't get back yourself. And so you continue mm -hmm. to be in that spiraling cycle of unhappiness so i wanted to point out one other thing when i can say that children are always watching that brought something to my mind because actually before i get to that during the week i had a i went to an event where this the man was talking about the absence of a father in children's life in a, in, in a child's life and what it does to those children and i just thought that it would be it would come into this conversation and that's something that we should also talk about some more because you know we've been having this series where we're talking about families and separations and estrangements and when this person is not talking to that person and this person is absent and all that one of the things that we, we don't also pay attention to so much is sometimes we feel like well this thing has happened it's happened but we don't know the impact of these things on the lives of these people the man who create who organized that event he himself said that he he grew up in a, without his father. And then he was sharing the things that he went through, the pains that he went through for being someone who was now searching for his father. And he started at the age of 10 to look for his father. His father didn't die. I think his mom happened to get pregnant and she was a single mom. And then he now started to have this battle of, I want to know my father. And so that's one of the things that we should also pay attention to as people bringing up children. Sometimes we don't know the, the struggle that the child is having because of absence of the mother or father in their life. And this is having an impact on them and who they're gonna to become tomorrow. And they may face certain things that they will go through and who they will turn out to be. There's so, sorry, this brings quickly, let me just say this. This brings me to something that a lot, and I, be, I, I, I hope, uh, a lot of young people and single parents will listen to this. Let's leave the side of, okay, a family where the husband and the wife are present mm -hmm. and they are raising the children. Let's leave that. I mean, that one, I mean, if you if you follow the right principles, you will do a good job mm -hmm. to an extent. But where the problem, one of the places where the problem is, is that some people, this for one reason or the other, some are stronger than the other. Some reasons are stronger than the other. So, uh, some conditions are worse than the others. But some people decide to be single parents. Mm. Maybe out of a, maybe the level of uh, character that the spouse is, whether the woman or the man. But it's a decision to be a single parent. If you decide to be a single parent, be ready to do a double job. Thank you. Thank if you. If you decide to be a single parent, if it's your decision, either for the fact of, that you cannot live with a man or you, the or what, any reason, but it is your decision. Even if it's not your decision, but you found yourself having, having to raise a child by yourself. If you're a woman, know that you will do a man's job too in raising if you are a man know that you will do a woman's job so if you don't know go and start learning yeah what's the perspective what is the perspective it's not easy i'm not saying in any way that it's easy but an effort must be made 
you must understand the perspective of a woman towards a child. And as a woman, you must know the perspective of a man towards a child, whether boy or girl. Take it, don't say, oh, I'm a mother, I'm a good mother. No, raising a child alone does not mean, does not require you to be a good mother alone. It requires you to do a yeoman's job. Raising a child as a man does not require you to raise a child as a man alone. It requires a yo, a yo woman's job, if you want to call it that. But the bottom line of it is that you must be seen to learn and to adapt to the other way. One way does not raise a child. Those are the things I just want to say. Thank you so much for, for that contribution. So maybe, perhaps we can look at it this way. In 2024, sometimes a woman might find herself getting to an age where she feels, all right, time is going by. And because we know that uh, um, we only have a window period within which we can have a child, let me now go and be a single parent by either doing IVF uh, or adoption or something and have a child of my own. Now, such a woman does not have a man to be yeah. there in the, in, the, in the life of that child. So tying what I was saying, what I said or what I what I would suggest is, even if, because you really cannot be a man if you're a woman, you really cannot totally understand. So it's not enough. It's definitely not enough to be a good parent, I mean, good mom, and so that's, that's all I can be. Or I'm a good dad, and that's all I can be. Now, to say, take the perspective of also, taking the perspective of other gender, how much of that can I do? So we have to tell ourselves the truth to recognize that really I can only be this. Now, if I cannot have somebody who will be a fatherly influence yeah. or a motherly influence, as in to be raising this child or children with me, then I must find ways to expose them to that kind of influence, whether it's by my own uh, sensible relatives of the other gender, you know, I have to find ways to fill that role because what I say is this: a human being is made of, is made from a mother and a father. Always, there is never going to be a human being who comes to Earth without it being a combination of a man and a woman somewhere that came and made that thing. And so these are the components. Therefore, it means that these two people, these two parties, are important in the life of yeah, that human being, which means that to get proper nurture, nourishment, whatever, it won't be complete if something is missing. That's why we find that sometimes the child has grown to a certain age and they start to look for that other one. Because all through their growth, mi mixing with other people and observing life, they feel that emptiness. There's that void. Yeah. In nature abhors a vacuum. So that void is there. So they're always going to be looking for that thing to plug that, that vacuum. So it's be, now, you know, it behoves on us if we're not conscious of it, if we were not before today, you think you're being a perfect mom or a perfect dad, the child is missing something. Believe yeah. it. So we must find a way to an avenue, avenues to meet. You may need to meet with a therapist or a, people who who are experts in that field. So suggest <laughs> Those are. Also, sorry to mm -hmm. cut you short. That should be a topical treat. African men and yeah. ter therapists, or women also. Let me not just say men. All right. So before we close, I want you to say, so I said I wanted to talk about when I can say children are always watching. Because with everything that we've said here, I'm talking about even single parents and how you should make sure that everything is equal. Here's something that we also had on another episode on Diaspora Lounge. I had this with the women's section. Uh, there was a conversation about, um, and people have this conversation, a lot of things that we say here, we need to put add context to them. For instance, even this thing Akin said, um, the woman is supposed to be the loyal one. Some people are going to walk away tomorrow and say, okay, so that means that he's trying to say that men don't have to be loyal, but they love. But inside that, you will see that you cannot inside love, love someone there's loyalty now. You cannot love someone without being loyal. loyal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's so now, so this person was saying that, um, it doesn't matter that no matter what, that children, uh, parents need to stay together for the sake of the children. And what we forget is that in situations like that, 
every situation has to be looked, the peculiarities of that situation has to be checked. It's not in all circumstances because if parents are, are staying together and the children are only observing people who are bickering, people who show, who do not love themselves, they're also learning something that you're setting them up still for failure tomorrow. So all these things will, so sometimes people will say, if the parents are divorced, then the children will have issues. Sometimes just the fact that those parents are staying together it's an issue for the children. And destroy them. Yeah. Yes. And I, I, I also spoke to somebody who, even the children were saying, Mom, why did you let him? Why, why are you allowing this man in our lives? The children are like, the mother is betraying them because she's allowing a man that keeps on hurting them to remain with her because she wants him for herself. And she said to me, for the sake of the children, I'm like, which children? You are hurting the children. So we take all those, everything needs to be taken in, in context. So we need to talk about that on another day. Um, if you're bringing up a child alone without the other parents, if you're together, even if you're together, it's sometimes it's worse. It's like those children would have been better off without even both parents, because some parents should not even be parents at all. It's actually a fact. So yeah. we should also talk about that in another day. And finally, I wanted to just talk about when human beings are living in a place where things are not, things are, they are very unhappy. Maybe it's a toxic place. We resort to coping mechanisms, and sometimes we will do this by suppressing our feelings, trying to ignore what is actually happening, and refuse to act, become people who do not accept reality. And in the end, children who grow up like this may do what? Turn to all sorts of vices. It could be uh, promiscuity, it could be uh, drugs, anything, yes. Any could, they could become people pleasers, yes become liars, they become anything but normal people because they are trying to cope with not accepting the reality of what they're living with within that family. And I see this. So when, when that person now starts doing this, the family now turns around and starts to maybe to even ostracize that person because they don't like the way the person has turned out without looking within to see how did this person end up in this thing. And those very people who are claiming, oh, this person is embarrassing our family by doing this thing, being this person that we, you are the ones who created this person. You haven't taken it's your time. Yeah. Yes. So we create, we create monsters in so many different ways by our carelessness. The day that we begin to own and realize and recognize what we're doing with the way that we're bringing up our children, and even take some of the responsibility for what our children have turned out to be, the better we will be as a society. Right, so uh, with that, we can close this particular topic unless somebody wants to add some, oh, uh, something I was gonna add. So now this is the end of me. Uh, you come across this video and for, and for our videos going forward, our episodes going forward, Try to look in the description box under the video. We will be adding some articles there. Today we'll talk about bringing children up and different um, things to consider. We'll be adding some articles that can be helpful to our community and our audience from time to time. Because we'll talk about reading, but I think that if you, before you think of where am I going to get a book, uh, the resources that I'm going to find, sometimes we will just have some, a few articles written and just right there for you so that you can easily grab them and help ourselves because all we want is to have a better um, society for all of us at the end because my children are going to grow up meeting your children i don't want my children to go and meet monsters and so that's why it's important to me to not just do it in my house i want as many of us as possible to do the things that will help all of us to have better people yes we can't reach everybody but the little that we can do we can do we should do anybody wants to add anything no, well, maybe in just one sentence. So um, it's just for we parents. I think you've said it all, really, but it's just for parents to be careful. Um, there's always been the question of um, nature or nurture. It is certainly not nature. It is nurture. Hmm. So what am I saying? Essentially, if you've done the studies that I've done, um, being a narcissist, being a horrible person to your spouse has got nothing to do with your nature. It is your nurture. 
it, it's mm. some way in your nature without a shadow of doubt mm. something that you picked up not having that love so why should she have it and it has nothing to do with your wife really or your spouse or vice versa as in husband or whatever it's got to do with everyone really and if it here's a thing it, children learn okay we we learn we absorb we absorb what we're given and a first point of contact our parents they, they know their parents for a while before they start going to school to know. So it's that initial impact. So it's just for us to, as young as when the child is even under two, to be aware. Don't think when the child is 17, I'll start treating them like, hey, hey you've come off age. No, because if you study this, which would I'm sure we'll treat it one day, narcissism, actually, the child disconnects emotionally by age two. That's what study shows, not in their teen years. So why am I saying this? I can't overemphasize the importance. I can't em emphasize enough the importance of our actions where our children are. Age two is when they disconnect emotionally due to the emotional trauma that they suffer or would suffer or ha have suffered from their upbringing so if you want to think about it and that's where i want to end it that it is at age two that you, between ages two and four sorry that you've damaged that child forever i think we'll be more careful in pushing that child yeah all right. that's all i have to say and my last word is uh, focus on raising proper human beings mm. Mm. focus on raising proper human beings with respect for themselves and respect for others. Mm. If you focus on that, you would have done 70%, 80% of right. the work. And it's even mm. in the Bible. Yeah. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, the moment that mm. you have, you find yourself as someone who is unable to love your neighbor, even if you don't believe in the Bible, don't look at it as a Christian. Look at it as a book that guides human your life. Yeah. The moment mm. that you're, you find yourself as someone who cannot love your neighbor as you love yourself, then start to examine yourself and you find out that you have a hand in in your own unhappiness. It's it's mm. just a, a law of life. That's what it is. Okay. Mm. Tony, are we having any last word from you? Do the best to creep to make a better world for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for this episode. Thank you for your wonderful contributions. I have learned so much. I want to believe that um viewers will also take one or two things home from here and let's apply them and if for nothing else just for the fact that your child will be unhappy tomorrow if you don't raise them to make other people enjoy them as a quality human being as well and with that we close remember to look under our videos going from now they won't always be there for everyone or in fact go to the community tab we'll go to the go to the community tab to find um little resources they won't be too long very brief things so that they can be useful for you and you can read them and and be done with them they don't want to task you too much all right uh remember to like our video and uh subscribe to our channel if you haven't so that sure. we can spread the word as much as we can and with that we'll close for today thank you for being with us bye, -bye.